In this video we're going to talk about the differences between capturing design history or turning it off in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video I'm going to attempt to cover some of the nuances and the workflows in Fusion 360, whether we're capturing design history or not. Now, this is a big, broad topic with, in my opinion, very limited use cases. So it's going to be a little obscure, but I'm going to try to do my best to tackle some of the nuances. The first thing that I want to note is the basic way in which we can capture design history or turn it off. So if you have a new design in Fusion 360, by default, you'll have a timeline. It's going to record things like your sketches and your features, and all that information is captured in that timeline. If you want to turn it off, the gear icon allows you to do not capture design history. If you want to turn it back on, you go up to the top of your browser and you select capture design history. Once it's turned off, you'll be able to turn it back on there. So these are the, the ways in which we can toggle back and forth between capturing or not capturing. Another note is that when you import a neutral CAD format, something like an IGIS or a STEP, by default, no timeline will be active. This is also true if you bring in or open a mesh body. So you have to pay attention to the bottom of the screen and make sure you understand that you are either capturing design history or you're not. So, now let's talk about what capturing design history really is. First off, we already understand the basics of parametric modeling in Fusion 360. You make a sketch, you add a dimension, you extrude a part. When you change the sketch dimensions or you change the feature dialogues, those changes are parametrically linked to your design. You can make it thicker or thinner, you can increase or decrease hole sizes or locations, and you have control over the entire design. When you are direct modeling, for example, if I came in and simply just deleted that hole, when you're capturing design history, you're capturing that as a feature in the timeline. So you can always go back and suppress it or delete it or change it in any way. But when we're direct modeling, we don't have that available option. Everything we do is destructive. The only way we can go back is with undo. So, the advent of these contextual environments, things like forms, where we create a form body, creates a feature in the timeline, and then once we're done in here, we finish the form and we go back to our normal design. That is not unique to the design workspace. It exists in manufacturing, it exists in simulation and generative design. So before we get too deep into this, let's take a real quick look at those. If we go to generative design, and we create a new structural or fluid path generative design, we have a contextual environment called edit model. Edit model allows us to do things like remove features, faces, replace with primitives. If we go to create, we have connector obstacles, we have a fluid volume option, and these are things that we don't typically see in the design workspace. They can be helpful for us to do things like remove holes. I can select hole, I can select a design, and you can see here it's highlighted all the holes and we can simply delete them quickly and easily. When we finish this, the model is only used in generative design. If I go back to the design, the holes are still there. So that contextual environment allows us to make changes directly within the generative design confines. This means that we can make adjustments to the shapes, we can defeature them, removing fillets and chamfers, adjusting the parameters of our design, only in the context of generative design. The same is true with simulation. If I go into a static stress study, instead of edit model, we have something called simplify. And the simulation model is going to contain the same features. So you can see here we can remove holes. We can even add things like fillets to the edge if we want to add a, a feature that's not existent in the design. And this is just going to be used inside of simulation in that simulation model for that study. So if we go back to the design, it goes back to its original state. The same is true or at least similar with manufacturing with the creation of what's called the manufacture model. This allows us to do things like make adjustments to the design that are solely for manufacture. Because it's very similar, I'm not going to go into it here, but just note that those contextual environments are important to understand in the design. 
Also, I want to note that if you go up to your user preferences and you navigate to design, we have an option to enable arrange and simplify tools. Now, if I turn this on and apply it, now if we take a look at modify, we have arrange, which allows us to do some primitive arranging of designs on a flat plane, and we have simplify. So now we have access to things like remove features, remove faces, and replace with primitives. So those options can be brought into the design workspace, but you need to go into your preferences and enable them. For me, I'm going to go back to design and I'm going to turn them off since I typically use the default install of Fusion 360 whenever I'm making videos. Next, let's travel over to design with no history. Now, while I am going through these examples, I haven't included them in the link in the description because you can use any designs to understand this concept. But when we have this imported design, we have no history. Typically, what happens is you'll want to come in and you'll want to capture design history. But before we do that, there are a couple of extra tools that are unlocked when we're in this in this no history mode. So again, under modify, we will see things that don't exist anywhere else like edit face. Edit face is sort of a take on converting a face of a, of a solid body, a B rep to a form body. Now that already exists when we're capturing history but we have to create a form body and we have to use the convert option. So again, some of these things become available to us. I'm not gonna go deep into the forms workflow because I have a specific video on forms workflows for no capture history, but I do wanna mention that it's important because a forms body and its converted solid or surface can exist at the same time. That's the main reason why you would wanna do this workflow. But back in the solids, under the Create menu, we have something called Find Features. Now, Find Features is a great tool that allows us to select a body, and we can have it look for all features or very specific ones. If we say OK, you'll notice in the browser we now have Extrude, a Pattern, and a Fillet. While this isn't technically capturing design history, what we have here is the ability to modify these values. So for example, if I wanted a smaller fillet, I can change that to 10 millimeter. This also works with things like press pull. If I were to select a fillet, I could make adjustments on the screen by using press pull. But notice that when we're using press pull in direct modeling or we're not capturing history, we don't have the same options that we typically do. If we use it in the design with history and I go to press pull, I have the option to choose automatic, modify the existing feature or create a new offset. For example, modify the existing feature allows me to modify all fillets at the same time. So again, these small nuances pop up in various places and it's gonna be hard to cover them all, but just note that in this case, we are doing what's called direct modeling. We're making changes to the design directly without capturing its history. But using that create option called find features does give us a little bit of control. For example, I can come in and I can modify the number of holes in this pattern by modifying this. But you might be wondering, what's going to happen to all this if I capture design history? Well, if we right click and we capture design history, it's all gone. But it's not really gone. It's still there somewhere. You'll notice that we have what's called a base feature. Now, the base feature is encapsulating all of that info that we captured. Very similar to when we create a form body. We have to edit the form body to go in and make changes. So if we want to manipulate things like the fillets on the corners, the number of holes in the pattern, we can right click and edit our base feature and it brings us back in here and we have access to those different features. We finish the base feature and we're back into our capturing design history mode. So these contextual environments that allow us to go back and forth between these workflows can be helpful, but honestly, the cases are few and far between. It's very helpful when you bring in a neutral CAD format, you can find features and then capture design history. But in most cases, we can come in and again, we can use things like press pull to make changes. If we want to adjust the holes, we can select and delete them. We can select them, use things like move faces and reposition it. And we have all this control where we can make adjustments to the design by using these direct modeling tools while capturing history. So some of the main reasons why you would want to avoid capturing history is if you're doing a lot of concept work and you're not really sure of the parameters that are going to be used to control the design, 
that's a case where you might want to use some of these direct modeling, no capture history modes. But honestly, again, in most cases, it's non-existent. You're going to capture the history anyways. So let's talk about one more aspect of this that we haven't covered yet, and that's creating what's called a base feature. When we create a base feature, we're essentially doing the same thing we did when we imported a model with no history. Creating a base feature allows us to create basic solids and surfaces. For example, I can create a sketch. I'm going to go ahead and just place it on this plane. I'm going to draw a 50 millimeter circle, and I'm going to extrude it. So when I extrude this, you might be thinking to yourself, well, we just created a sketch. We have an extrude in here. Why can't we simply modify that? Well, the main difference here is that the sketches in the direct modeling approach aren't going to be parametrically linked. So if I change this to say 25 millimeters, the sketch changes, but the feature itself doesn't. And that's because they're no longer linked. We're not capturing history, so we're not maintaining the link between all of the different elements of the design. So that's an important aspect of this because it can be very easy to come in and spend a bunch of time manipulating things like sketch dimensions and creating stuff in a base feature before you've actually captured design history and then all of that information is gonna be lost. That doesn't mean that we can't make changes. For example, we can use press pull. We can bring this down to, let's say 12.5 if we wanted a 25 millimeter diameter cylinder. So we can inspect that and we can see that we've got 25 millimeter diameter. So we still do have tools that allow us to do this work, but they are, again, a little bit few and far between. You have to have a really good reason to want to do this. In my workflow in Fusion 360 for the past six years, I have not come up with a good reason with the exception of the forms workflow. Forms workflow exposing solid bodies and surface bodies and being able to have a converted form body and the form itself at the same time is one of the only reasons I've found to use this workflow. It is still a good idea for us to understand it though. So make sure that you do at least play around with it, but don't do it on a design that matters because again, once you turn off capture design history, you are gonna lose any of the history that you created. So for example, for the design that I have sketches and features, if I go to capture design history and I turn it off, some of those are going to be captured in the browser. But when I finish this and I turn capture design history back on, they don't come back to my timeline. So while yes, I can go in and I can modify that base feature, there is limited functionality here. So the extrudes, for example, if I go back to the original extrude, notice I don't have an edit option. With fillet, I can edit the fillet because essentially it's targeting the press pull command. So we could use press pull to change the thickness of this by pulling it up, but we don't have direct control over that original feature. And if that's the case and there's really no value, we can always right click and dissolve these because they're really of no use to us. But you can see here that we can get rid of those and we're left with just the fillet. And we finish the base feature, we go back into our design. There are two aspects of this that I haven't talked about. And one of those aspects is creating what's called a derive. I don't wanna spend a bunch of time on derives because again, there are some very specific workflows that would require that. But it's important to note that when you derive a body or a component out of a design, you're essentially getting a base feature. You're not gonna have access to modifying parameters. You're simply going to be bringing that design into a new design. If you break the link, you're left with a base feature and nothing else. It's a little bit different than if you were to, say, insert a design into this one from your data panel. Then you have those links that you can break and you do have all of the features in the timeline. So I know that this is a complicated topic. And again, there are a lot of little nuances, things that appear, things that happen when you're not capturing design history, things that you can do and things that don't work how you would expect them to. So if you're trying to apply this workflow to something and you have any trouble, then just comment on the video, send me an email, ask me a question, and I'll do my best to the, direct you in the, the best possible way. But again, 99.9% .9 of the time, I would recommend capturing design history with that 0.01% really being for the complex forms workflow. That's the only case that I found that really benefits from it. And the other nuance to that is if you're importing a design that doesn't have history, well, then you can use things like find features and then turn capture design history on. 
So that's a little bit different, but again, those are, those are really the two main cases where I see this being functional. So as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Any questions, please let me know, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.